Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and this year look at the biggest fallers and the biggest risers in Bowman Chrome autographs in 2024. So last December, I made a video looking at like tiered players based off of their BGS 9.5 Bowman Chrome Gold, Bowman Chrome Blue, and Bowman Chrome Base autographs of a lot of the major stars in Major League Baseball. And I had that data from last year. So I thought, you know what? I want to see who dropped the most and who rose the most over the last 12 months. Well, 10 months, I guess, because we had a full Major League Baseball season. So what I'm going to show you is the price differences between those 2023 and December prices to the 2024 October prices. One thing I'll note, these are are all BGS 9.5s. I actually added refractors in and went back and pulled the refractors from December 2023. So we have golds, blues, refractors, and base cards. And then we averaged out how well they performed, and that is the score. So here's an example of Wander Franco. He is down 56% because that's the average of these four numbers that are drops. And that's how we're going to determine this. And we're going to go from the biggest fallers to the biggest risers at the beginning. I'm going to go very quick. There's 26 of them, so probably 10 to 30 seconds a person. Wander Franco, not much to say. People were still speculating on him last year, so I wanted to include him and I'm proud of you. His cards have dropped. Good job. So that's great. One thing I do want to note, Austin Riley is a great example of this. I did not include his blue because he does not have a blue. So most players have all four, but there's going to be a few that don't have a gold or a blue that sold recently, or they just did not have one. And that's the case with Austin Riley. We can see his gold went from $2,700 to $1,100. He did not have the year that he hoped for and he got hurt and it just was a bad year for the Braves overall. So a perfect storm for Austin Riley cards. This was the year he was supposed to take that next step after a good last few years and become like the best third baseman in baseball. It just did not happen. And we saw his gold drop 59%, his refractor dropped 41%, and his base card dropped 57% for a total negative drop of 52%. Paul Goldschmidt did not have a good year. But I like Paul Goldschmidt. Even I can say for the first three or four months of baseball, he was an automatic out and it was brutal to watch. He actually figured it out really well towards the end of the season if you want to look at his splits. But either way, they were expecting him to be MVP Paul Goldschmidt. Two years ago when he was 35, he won the MVP. And now he was about league average. I think it was 100 WRC plus and 98 OPS plus. And on top of that, he just wasn't the same guy. I think he will bounce back personally, but either way, this is what happens when a player hits that wall. I don't think this means Paul Goldschmidt's like a horrible player to buy their cards of, but I do think that his cards dropped the correct amount this last year. But look at his blue pricing in a BGS 9.5 at 456. It was like there's some meat on the bones there. He did not have a gold sale in 2024 to point towards. At 23, Ronald Acuna Jr. This is not surprising for a player towards ACL for the second time. Same situation. He actually was not very very good when he was playing. I think he was a negative war right at zero to 0 0.5 war right around there in like 40 or 50 games. He just was not great, unfortunately. And then he hurt himself even worse with the torn ACL. His gold did not have a sale that was worth looking at, but his blue did go for 4,500 in 2023 in December down to $3,000. His most recent sale, his refractor went from 1893 to 1200 and his base from 1230 to 810. So for a total drop of 34%, hopefully Acuna bounces back this next year. Next up, we have Jordan Alvarez dropped 30 2%. This could be because of this blue sale right here, especially because there's only three data points on him, one of which was flat, one of which was a big drop, one of which was in the middle. So maybe like 25 to 28% is more where he should have been. But either way, his cards are down slightly. And that's just because he had injury issues as well. He did not have a great first half, if I'm not mistaken, but he turned it on in the second half and did really well. So there's still some meat on the bones for Jordan's cards, in my opinion, but we saw a drop here. Maybe this is a sign you should look at his cards if they're cheaper than last year. Maybe it's just not a sign of anything. At number 21 is Julio Rodriguez, another player who just, man, had a horrible start. Again, horrible. Way worse than last year. Ended up having a pretty good year. I think like a three to four war season, if I'm not mistaken. But overall, his goal went from 10,500 to 5,490, a 47.99% drop. That's brutal. His blue is down 20%. His refractor is down 30%. And his base is down 20% for a total drop of 30%. After that, we have Manny Machado at number 20 with a 28.71% drop. Manny also dealt with injuries. He had the weird tennis elbow issue for the first half. He actually had a pretty good year. Honestly, he ended up having a pretty solid year for Manny Machado and his card still dropped because he's getting older. We see this with these players and they get close to retirement age. And I'm not saying he's retiring soon. He has a big long contract. He can't retire, but he's getting older. He's not going to be as good, right? We see this with a lot of players where they aren't as great and their cards start to slow down. But overall down 28%, the biggest drop was his blue from $2,100 to $1,100. At number 19 is Devers. Another player started out really hot and then slowed down and had injury issues, but played through it. Down 26%, no gold 
gold sale to really point towards, but we can see his refractor is the big drop here from $500 to $270. His blue wasn't down as much at 645, which is a 15% drop, and his base was down 19%. At number 18 is Carlos Correa. Carlos Correa had a good year. He also dealt with injuries. You can see this becoming a theme. Injuries or poor performance is what dropped these players, but either way, Correa still put up a pretty solid year for Carlos Correa, probably one of his highest OPS plus of his career and a decent war around 3.5 to 4.5 war, but he is still down 9% on blue, 20% on refractor, and his base BJ's 9.5 went for 55 bucks. So an average about 26% drop. And number 17 is Bo Bichette. I'm surprised Bo Bichette did not drop more to be fully transparent with the year that he had. And he was not good. He just was not good. Injuries did not perform when he did play. He wasn't great, but he is down 40% on his gold, 16% on blue, 51% on refractor and 15% up on base. Maybe it's just because it's an easier barrier to entry, or maybe it's just because I don't know why. At number 16, we have Nolan Arenado down 19%. Another player that's not surprising, similar vein of Paul Goldschmidt and Manny Machado. He did not have injuries. It just wasn't a good bounce back year for Arenado. He, two years ago, same with Paul Goldschmidt, had like seven plus war. He was third in MVP voting. Ironically, Machado was second and Goldschmidt was first. And all three of those players have had troubles maintaining values from those peaks. And Arenado's down 19%. At number 15 is Tatis. He did drop 13% but if we look at his gold, I think a gold is a good indicator here. He's actually only down 3% on the gold, only down 5% on the blue. His refractor is down 25% from 919 to 685, but that's about it. His base is down 18% too, but the bigger cards have held, which could be manipulation, but I bet you it's more people are speculating on him. This postseason did help until they were eliminated by the Dodgers. He had a great postseason, so that might help his cards heading into 2025. Number 14 is Mike Trout. How sad is that? Down 11%. His gold is 45 thousand only down 10 percent to 40 thousand surprisingly i'm surprised it wasn't more his blue went from 13,400 to 12,500 down seven percent his refractor got absolutely hammered it went from 10,000 to 5,700 and in a weird case just like boba Shett, his base did go up it was flat or up at 14 percent up but yeah his refractors they did get hit for good reason he played like 30 games this year after having injuries of previous three out of five years or five out of five years whatever you want to say for mike trout but down 11 percent and number 13 is Vlad. This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. The big one, and the reason why this is happening is because of his gold sale. It could have been overheated, but his last gold in December went for 12000 His most recent gold went for about $4,500. That is a reasonable price, down 63%. But his blue is flat. His refractor is about 20%, and his base is up 25%. So realistically, he could be positive. But either way, Vlad had a good year. Probably the best first baseman in baseball right now. I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody that someone's going to get mad at me for, but Vlad had a really good year. He really did. The year we wanted to see. He lifted the ball. He hit it home. All these things that we were questioning, he did, which is good. And now we're getting into the positive players. First is Clayton Kershaw. It makes sense as this player is approaching retirement. His cards are going up slightly. His gold is down, but his blue is up and his base is up. No refractor sale, surprisingly, in a BGS 9.5 condition, but 3.9% for Kershaw. At number 11 is Freddie Freeman, another Dodger, up 8.39%. His gold is 8,400. It's marginally down uh, about 0.5% to 8,357. His blue is down pretty big and his refractor is down pretty big, but his base is up massively. So $762 from $409, so 86% up. You could argue his cards should be negative as well because if we look at these down, 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 and then way up. But either way, he's up at 8.39%. Next up is Corey Seager. Corey Seager is up across the board aside from refractor. Fractors is actually flat on the blue, but his gold did go from $1,500 to $2,300. His refractor is down slightly, but his blue is flat and his base is up. Corey Seager is up average about 10%. Bryce Harper's up 14% at number nine. He actually had his gold, I said minus 10. This actually should be up 10% here. And that is in the calculation because it was a spreadsheet. It wasn't me being stupid. And his blue is marginally down, but his refractor is up and his base is up for Bryce Harper at 14% up number nine. At number eight is Mookie Betts. Mookie had a good year and then he got hurt as well. Very similar to the players, but he was like the MVP front runner before he got hurt. His gold is only going for $9,200 last year. Now it's up to about 12,000. This was the lowest sale of the last three sales as well. There were 12,000 and 13,000, but this one had the weakest autograph, but still I wanted to pull that sale. So it's 26% up. His blue is up 24% from 3,400 to 4,300. His refractor is up 9.54% and his base is up 24.51%. This is the first player who's up across the board, I believe. At number seven is Otani. Who would have been surprised by this one? And probably the unanimous MVP winner, potential World Series winner we have. He's in the NLCS, so two more series to see what happens. His gold is up 36%. His blue is up 41%. Gold from 37,000 to 52. 
2,000, 51,000, blue from 13 to 19,000, no refractor, but his base is also up 23%. At number six is Juan Soto, went to the Yankees and his cards are up. People might say, man, his cards haven't moved very much, but the Bowman Chrome autographs have moved. This was actually done before he was traded to the Yankees, so it might not be fair because they were lower, but his gold was 16,000, now it's 19,000. His blue was 5,000, now it's 9,000, so 64% up. His refractor's up 44% and his base is up 21% for a total up of 37.62%. Gunnar Henderson was not on this list last year, but I wanted to include him because he had a really good breakout season. He was good before, but this was a really big year for him. His gold is up 100% from 3,300 to 6,700. His blue is marginally down, surprisingly, but his refractor's up and his base is up as well. It says negative, but it actually is positive for a total of 42% up for Gunnar Henderson. Justin Verlander, he is up huge, 53% uh, up, and it's mainly because his golds went to the price they should have been originally. That's all it was. There were some low gold sales, and then people realized Justin Verlander is a Hall of Famer, World Series winner. There's nothing he needs to do, and his gold went for $9,000 in a BGS 9.5, which is probably the correct price price up 178% year over year. His blue is marginally down, his refractor is up, and his base is up. So Justin Verlander's number four at 53%, even though he didn't really do much this year. At number three is Aaron Judge, another MVP winner. Makes sense his cards are up, up 50% on the gold, 82% on the blue, 58% on the refractor, and 62% on the base. Pretty surprising there's two players ahead of him with the year that he had. But that's because at number one, the player might surprise you. But at number two, we have Bobby Wood Jr. who's up 80.55%, his competition for MVP in the AL. Witt is up 40%, 50%, 91%, and 116% respectively. His gold went for $6,100 last December. Now it's at $10,000. Blue from $3,000 to $4,500. Refractor is actually up from $990 to $1,900 and base from $550 to $1,200. Number one, if you can guess this player, I'm proud of you. Francisco Lindor. Francisco Lindor had a huge jump. His gold went from 1,000 to 3,000. His blue went from 626 to 870, which is 40% increase. His refractor went from 275 to 400 for a 45% increase. And his base went from 179 to 350 for a 95% increase. That gold being up 178% is not super surprising because now Mets fans love him. He needed a moment like this to be accepted by the Mets fan base. And it's now happened for Francisco Lindor. And surprisingly, but unsurprisingly, think about it, his cards are up. He was kind of undervalued heading into the year and he performed well and hopefully he can still continue to perform well as they're in the NLCS. All right, other than that, let me in the comments down below what surprised you and what didn't and I will see you in the next video.